Hey everybody, we're gonna take a look again at the Revolve Sketch tool because I really feel that between the Revolve Sketch tool partnered up with the Sketch tool, you can create some pretty complex shapes pretty quickly. Okay, let me show you what I've been playing around with. Okay, I'm gonna start off by throwing down a Revolve Sketch onto our work plane, like so. And you'll notice here again, I'm just going to sketch out the one half of this object because this half or this object that I'm creating is essentially going to be spun around this center axis. So if I do something like this, you can see immediately on my right that it's creating the shape as it would appear once it spins around that axis. So I'm just going to throw down some points here, make something interesting. I don't know what I'm making here. I'm just trying to make something kind of interesting. And just like that, and like that. All right, it's a complete shape. And there you can see on the right, that is what it's going to look like. Now I can go back and I can click on this object and just like you would in Sketch, I can take these points and I can edit them. So I can take this point here and I can make these corners smooth corners and do that for these points as well. And of course, just know that you can grab the handles here and I can resize them, I can change the angle of them, I can influence how that line is going to pass through that point. But I like the way it was before, so I'm just gonna undo this. And that's the shape there. So let's just back out of this and show you what this looks like on the work plane. I'm going to set this sketch off to the side here, but I also want to make sure that I'm going to reopen it actually and just make a copy of this. So I'm going to take this object that I've sketched here, copy it, and I'm going to exit back out. And I'm going to drag out the extrude sketch, otherwise known as the sketch tool. That's how I've called it before, but I think they've changed the name. And, and now here we are looking at my sketch palette or my work area in the sketch tool or extrude sketch. And this is the beauty of it. I can literally just paste what I copied from the revolve sketch tool into the extrude sketch tool. Now, why would I do this? Well, I can quickly take this shape and do something like copy and paste it. And I'm basically going to take this copy and complete the other half of this object by flipping it the other way. And I can do this by selecting that value and putting a negative sign in front of it. So in this case, taking that 26 millimeter value along the X axis there and putting it so that it's now minus 26 millimeters, it will flip it the other way. And now I can just simply take this shape, select it, and drag it so that it is now on the other side and lined up properly. Again, it's set to snap to every millimeter, but you can certainly change this. And now I have my full piece. Now I'm just simply going to finish my sketch. It's going to exit me out back onto the work plane, and there's the piece there. Now you'll see it's oriented in a different way, but I can quickly just take this and make it so it's vertical again. And what I've basically done here is I've created a cross section of that original spool that I created in Revolve Sketch. Why would I do this? Well, I can take this cross section and extend it. I can basically change the dimensions of it just like I would any other shape. And in this case, I'm going to take this cross sectional shape and add it to this spool. So I basically extend this shape. All right, so obviously we're going to need to do some alignment here. And also we need to ensure that this blue piece starts at the midpoint of our circular piece or else we end up with a transition that's not very smooth between these two shapes. We are going to use the ruler tool to help us out. So this is just a simple application of the ruler, but if you wanna know more about the ruler, I'll include a link to a ruler tool video that I made that goes into greater detail about the features of this pretty powerful tool. So you're gonna notice some green values and some blue values, and those are attached to the X and Y axes. The blue values are the dimensions of your selected object, and you can actually change those dimensions as well. The green values are telling you the distance of that object to the X 
and the y-axis. And by changing those values, you can set your selected object a certain distance along the x or y-axis. So you can see here my disc shape is set 9.08 millimeters away from that vertical or y-axis. Setting that value to zero moves that selected object right up against that axis. So making note of the blue value of my disc, it is coming in at 51.94 in length or diameter. So the midpoint would be half that, 25.97. So by selecting the blue object, I can now see its distance in green away from that axis. And I can change that so that it is now 25.97, basically taking us to the midpoint of that green disc. And by using the alignment tool, again, to double check that they are aligned perfectly to each other, I can ensure that there is going to be a very smooth transition between the two sketches and basically make it look seamless. And making this object did not take very long at all. I can't imagine how long it would have taken me if I just used your regular box and cylinder shapes and then trying to notch out and carve out these shapes along the side. It would have taken a long time. But with Sketch and Revolve Sketch, it's just so much faster. Okay, so for this one, we're going to start with an extrude sketch first. Okay, so with this concept in mind, we're going to roll a little faster here. This is footage of me doing the same kind of thing, but now I'm using a sketch that is an open path. Basically, I'm just creating a line here and then building a shape off of that line. So I'm throwing down some points here, creating that line, and then when I'm done, I'm just going to move the cursor to click on that checkbox there on the left to signal that I am done with my open path. Now afterwards, you can go down along the bottom there and you have some options there to increase the thickness around that open path that you've created. You have the ability to round off or bevel the corners of your sketch. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to round off these corners as well as take a look at those endpoints at the top. And I'm going to round those off as well. And this open path that I'm creating is half of the shape that I'm actually going to create because I'm going to copy this and then paste it, flip it using that same change to the dimensions there by adding a negative sign to the front of it so that it flips it. And then I can just simply take that end and add it to the other side of that shape to complete my shape, which looks more like a big U. All right, so we're just going to flip this up so it's sitting flat onto our work plane. And we're going to re-enter this sketch to again take a copy of this sketch so we can import it and paste it into Revolve Sketch. So I've re-entered the sketch, take a copy of that half of the sketch, and then let's drag out the Revolve Sketch tool. And again, I only need to take a copy of that one half of my original sketch because this tool, I only need a half of my shape because it's going to basically create the rest of the shape by spinning it around that center axis. And that's exactly the shape I want. So ultimately, I've created a bit of a bowl shape here, but I don't want the bowl shape. I just want half of this bowl shape because this is essentially going to create the end caps for my more complex shape. Something to make note of here, this was a piece that was 22 millimeters wide. And so when I double that, it should really be 44 millimeters across, but instead it's a little bit shy of that. It's like 43.97, 43.98. It's not a lot, but I do wonder how much of that starts to add up if you're using this a lot. It's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're really worried about fit. You may have to do some slight readjusting and resizing. All right, so let's get back out of this sketch. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a cutout that I will use to basically take away half of this shape. All right, so I'm taking out a box hole to serve as my cutout. And as luck would have it, this thing is 43.9 millimeters wide. So half of that is 21.95 millimeters.
Again, I don't know why we lose that little bit in Revolve Sketch, but it's something to be aware of. And after that, just making sure that the rest of this box is large enough and wide enough to take out the entire half of this original shape. And then using the alignment tool to ensure that our cutout is just cutting out the one half of this green bull like object. All right, so that is the one end of our object here. So I'm just going to flip it around so it's aligned properly, use the alignment tool, center them, and then use that work plane tool, place it on the end surface of that end cap, and then selecting my mid piece there, the blue piece, and dropping it onto that work plane or D. And just in case you didn't know, selecting the work plane tool again, and then selecting anywhere else on that work plane makes it disappear. Now it's time to duplicate that end piece, flip it 180 so I can do the other side of this piece. Place down the work plane tool again, and then selecting that other end cap, pressing D to drop to that work plane. So just checking out the details here, we have this nice rounded top edge, an angled bottom. This was all done in sketch, and it didn't take very long at all. And it was a combination of both extrude sketch and revolve sketch. Okay, just one more. This one was inspired from a video from HL Mod Tech. He did one making railway tracks, and this is a very similar type of idea. But again, just highlighting this ability to jump back and forth between extrude sketch and revolve sketch. So here we are in extrude sketch. I'm just going to quickly make the cross section of my race car track here. Pretty simple. And exiting out now, flipping this track so it's lying flat on our work plane. Quickly you can see how I can just extend this and make this a longer stretch of track. But of course, how are you going to make the turns in your track? All right, let's get back into the sketch. And like we did before, we're going to copy this sketch and exit out, throw down our revolve sketch, and let's paste our sketch into this canvas. So you can see here what it's done. By default, it will place the sketch so that it is dead center on that axis that we use to spin around. But there is nothing stopping you from taking this shape and basically shifting it off of that axis. And in doing so, you can create a ring-like object. But in this case, it's not just any ring, it is our track. And after this, I can extract any portion of this curved track by basically throwing down cutouts. If I want a quarter of this turn, I can do cutouts for that. A 180 turn, I can certainly do that as well. It just depends how much you remove from this circular track. Now, the trickiest part in all of this is basically finding that midpoint of that track because, again, the dimensions of this slightly change. You're going to be dealing with weird dimensions like 0.97 or 0.98. So calculating the half of that value is going to be the trickiest part in all of this. But once you have that value, you can start to make the cutouts that will leave you with a 90 degree turn, a 180 degree turn, whatever you need. And if you're 3D printing this, essentially you can make segments of track that you can also design in there the ability to click together and fasten together and ultimately create your own track set, your own track system. Now again, I've sped up the footage here, but still, doing this is so much easier and so much faster using these sketch tools. I can't even imagine what I would have to do if I was using just regular Tinkercad shapes. These tools are great. And I'm just wrapping my head around this. I am really curious to see what other people do with this. So keep on tinkering. And until next time, take care. And we will see you on the next video.